Welcome. In this video, you are going to learn the summary of the essay Culture Industry Reconsidered written by Theodore Adorno. This, if you watch this till the end, you will get a clear-cut understanding about this essay. The class is divided into three parts. In the first part, we will have a short discussion about the author. Second, we will go and understand about the work. And third, we will go into a detailed summary. And uh, the parts you can see under them are all uh, uh, con con concerned with the summary. So it is purely divided into three parts. Let's know about the author, Theodore Adorno. Actually, Theodore Ludwig Weinsen Grunt is his original name. Uh, he lived between 1903 to 1969, and he was a German philosopher, sociologist, psychologist, musicologist, composer, and known for his critical society of the, uh, theory of society. Whenever you study cultural studies, you have to understand that there are two major movements of cultural studies. One started in Germany with the Frankfurt School around the time of 1930s. The second one started in Britain in the uh, late 1950s with Raymond Williams. And both these have something in common, but most of the time they have many differences. Theodore Adorno belongs to the first one for a group of uh, theorists who studied culture in the 1930s that you need to understand. And he is associated with uh, Max Hockheimer, uh, Eric Fromm, uh, Walter Benjamin, these are the common names uh, associated with this. And remember, Theodore Adorno was the first one to systematically study the impact of media into human mind and into our day-to-day -day relationship. And uh, he was uh, worried how this mass culture, its literary activity, are going to impact our socialization and our political reality, how they are going to influence our ideology or they will change our perceptions. So as I said, he was a leading member of Frankfurt School of Critical Theory. So this is the kind of introduction you need, you need about the author. Then we will go into the works. Uh, as I told you, uh, Adorno is known for the term cultural industry. That was his brainchild. Along with uh, Max Hockheimer, he coined the term cultural industry by which he means the mass culture the culture of uh, television, media, what it does to us. And uh, remember, these Frankfurt School of uh, Theorists, they were critique of fascism, they were uh, critique of what you may call uh, the media, its impact uh, on our life. And uh, he has published four major books in his lifetime. One is not an as a Dialectic of Enlightenment in the year 1947. Second one, Minima Moralia in 1951 and in 1966, Negative Dialectics. And after his death, one more book was uh, published. And uh, he was a kind of a critic who had no problems in attacking the Western culture and uh, uh, what you may call the aesthetic theory was his fourth work. So the essay that we are discussing was published in the year 1963. And remember, it was uh, written by uh, Theodore Adorno and Eisen G. Rabinbach. It's two people together wrote it. And as I told you, it traces the impact of mass culture in our consumer society. And he also studied how these cultural industries are formed and impact us. And uh, he was the first one, as I told you, to study the impact of technology in our personal lives. Now we go on to the summary part. What is the main argument of uh, this essay? Theodore Adorno wants to tell that cultural industry, that is this uh, television industry, this mass uh, communication, is uh, anti-enlightenment. In enlightenment, what was the theme of enlightenment? To think rationally, to act. But in the present day television culture, what happens is that people become lethargic. And more importantly, people lose their freedom and independent way of thinking. Instead, they become passive consumers. When they passively consume the data, what happens is that the ideology of the media company will start to influence their thinking. So what is uh, in the second, what is, mean, what is meant by uh, the cultural industry? It is meant by the commodities of media products. And uh, this essay can be conveniently divided into two parts for our purpose. In the first part, he speaks about the features of cultural industry. And the second part, he speaks about its impact. He begins the essay by defining the origin of the term. He says uh, the term culture industry was coined by himself and Max Hockheimer 
in 1947 in their book the dialectic of enlightenment before the term culture industry was uh, used they used the word mass culture and he defines that uh, culture industry as a matter of something like culture that arises spontaneously from the masses themselves so in culture industry culture is not it, it hasn't got the conventional meaning it is what the media thinks something what is known as trending based on that they produce a lot of uh, shows for the audience so ultimately the culture industry's culture has got no conventional meaning of what we think of culture it is something only made for profit making it is that it has no other intention but at the same time since it is a business culture industry is a business the master's voice ideology will always to stand with the ruling so what happens is that media instead of being a critique of the ruling in any democratic society it becomes an accomplice of the ruling class by creating visuals and Im images and news that will uh, what you may call hide reality so that is why he is very much critical of culture industry in a very early stage and what what are the features uh, of culture industry theodor adorno says there are two features first thing it is made for mass consumption that means uh, uh, it, it fuses the old and familiar reality and uh, it is manufactured according to plan generally when we communicate we don't think that much but when it comes to cultural industry it is well planned and uh, uh, it's a fusion of high art and low art and the problem is that it can control and form a general consensus and consciousness for example uh, at the time of elections the exit polls and all they can form they can create a feeling that a candidate is going to win so by that they can drive our motives our actions and the second thing is that as i told you culture industry is a business it's more its intention is to make profit when its intention is to make profit it will always support the ruling class so basically we think media as the fourth pillar of any democratic any democratic country which has to critique but instead it supports because they want the ideology of the ruling class they want to make money they want to run it as a business and be successful and in the next part he defines the word culture and industry as i told you the word culture has not got the conventional meaning adorno uses it differently here the culture means commodities made by the mass media for the uncritical mass consumption to make profit actually basically you see that we don't publicly criticize even if you criticize mass media is not going to know so ultimately there is a feeling that only the mass media people know what we want and the second thing industry means it creates a kind of standardization for example think of a car when it comes out in industry it is standardized its tires every part is standardized similarly when something is produced by the media it standardizes and that becomes the norm so uh, what happens is that here in in an art what is the difference between art and culture industry is that in art there is an aura of the artist artist there is something special he brings in but in the culture industry since it's a fusion with only profit making it standardizes so what happens is that it ultimately kills the multiple voices and multiple variety that we find in a particular kind of art form and what is the power of culture industry this is the third segment of the essay he says that uh, the main power of culture industry is his power to form conscious uh, consensus among uh, its consumers okay uh, it a kind of collective consciousness and uh, it is very harmful because people are not thinking here they become passive consumers and ultimately the media does the thinking for you so what the media says you start to believe in so our individual thinking is lost that is why um, uh, adorno is very much critical of this culture industry and secondly is that people fall for gratification they they just come switch on the tvs or turn on the mobiles and they watch consume data only uh, with the, what you may call for their gratification there is no nothing uh, they think about it and finally uh, more the third and most important thing is that culture industry proposes a kind of ideology and uh, ideology is uh, what you may call it spins discussed in culture industry 
uh, Roland Barthes he spe speaks about how myths have got a, a certain kind of ideology. So ultimately, here it says that it does not question the status quo. So it goes with the ideology of the ruling class, so which is really bad. Adorno concludes uh, the essay with uh, his main criticism against uh, culture industry. He says primarily that culture industry, it doesn't solve any uh, man's problems. Rather, it uh, uh, deludes uh, them with false conflict. So uh, actually, whenever uh, basically all the forms of art, all the art forms came to solve man's some of the problems. So here it doesn't happen. Second thing is that uh, uh, it, it takes no moral responsibility. Uh, it neither guides a blissful life or a new art form moral responsibility. And uh, the next thing is that uh, it has got a very high power interest to control it. it. Most importantly, he says the consensus which it propagates strengthens blind and opaque authority because there is no uh, uncritical questioning. It, it stands for a kind of consensus. And uh, another thing is that it exploits the powerless members of the society. So Adorno warns that just like a steady drops of water hollow the stone, the culture industry incessantly drills the same formula on behavior. So if you watch a channel for a long time, ultimately what happens is that our ideology becomes the channel's ideology. That is the danger of culture industry. In conclusion, we can say that as these points I am repeating, Culture industry, the effect of culture industry is uh, anti-enlightenment. That is the progressive domination of freedom and happiness. Culture industry impedes the development of autonomous, independent individuals who judge and decide consciously for themselves. So ultimately, Adorno is promoting into independent thinking and individualism. It's a precondition of any democratic society. If you follow the leader and if you are uncritical, what is the use? And uh, another thing is that culture industry as an arena in which critical tendencies and potentialities were eliminated. Culture industry, remember at that time there were not many rules. And so it doesn't critique of anything. It just follows the status quo and it manipulates the population. Its only intention is to make profit. It hasn't got any other goals. So in a society, especially uh, in which Adorno lived after, a war, after the First World War, he was highly critical because at that time, as you know, media was used for propaganda by many of the dictators uh, lived at that time. So no wonder he looked at uh, media from that angle. Though it was, uh, he took, coined them and published in 1963, he's speaking of the horrors of culture industry or mass culture in our lives. So I hope you got the essence of the essay. I request you to read the essay in original. And thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in another class.